first of all, startups think about PR often very late in their development stage. Uh, most startups are very focused on technology, building uh, tech products, and PR and marketing often come, I think, far too late in the development process. Uh, and I'm going to try and convince you that PR is something that you should be thinking about today. And it's also something that you can start executing yourself quite easily and uh, quite cheaply. So today's session, as the presentation says, is going to be all about doing startup PR that actually works. Right, so you'll learn three things in this session. Uh, we'll go over very briefly what PR is and how startups can use it, and we'll give you some actual case studies of clients that we've worked with uh, to explain that. Uh, we'll then also explain how to match business goals with communication goals. Uh, PR and communications and your marketing must align with your primary business goals, so we'll make sure that you're developing communication strategies uh, that, that align with your business goals. And then towards the end of the presentation, we'll walk you through the 10 step process, uh, which is basically this document, uh, which will explain very clearly and simply how to create communication goals based on your business goals and how to put together a communication strategy and then execute it. So, how does PR and communications actually help me achieve business goals? So, I thought the best thing to do here is to simply give you a few examples of startup clients that we've worked with in the past and how we've helped them achieve business goals using PR and communications. So, first up, Solar Paper uh, is a uh, company, well, the company is actually called Yoke and their product is Solar Paper. Uh, we helped them with their Kickstarter campaign, uh, an extremely successful campaign which raised over a million dollars. And uh, we helped them with their PR and communication strategy around their campaign and ended up helping them get featured in over a hundred articles in around uh, two dozen languages. So uh, massive global coverage during their 30-day campaign on Kickstarter. Uh, and the campaign cost for this was only $10,000. So if you imagine that they raised over a million and they only paid us $10,000, it demonstrates as well that you can get a great PR result, which has real return on investment, ROI. Result, 100 articles and a million dollars in, in, uh, in fundraising. <coughs> uh, second case study, again, a small Korean startup. They just launched their app. They had around 100 uh, beta testers, and we helped them propel that number to around 7,000 downloads of their app per week after holding a very small press event. We held it in a bar. Um, it's a beer-related app, so holding it in a bar made sense. We invited a small number of journalists who came down, met the CEO, tried the app, had a beer, uh, resulted in, again, huge number of articles uh, globally, um, seven different languages, around 50 articles published, and again, the business result, 7,000 downloads of their app per week. Uh, Real Packing is a company that uh, we worked with just very recently. They are pushing beyond Korea for the first time, and so they needed some communications material in English. We did a, a, a fairly rapid rewrite of their website, we prepared a very short, simple product introduction video for them and translated some of their technical product doc documentation. Again, uh, the cost of this, very, very low, and uh, it gave them all the basics to start doing overseas uh, communication marketing activity. And finally, uh, TechCrunch. Every startup loves TechCrunch. Um, I get asked several times a week by startups, uh, please get us on TechCrunch. Well, we can't guarantee that, but we have been able to place startups on TechCrunch. Um, but again, every communication activity that we do tries to focus on achieving a business goal for the, uh, for the client. In this case, the business goal was helping to increase qualified business leads in the US. And so an article on TechCrunch made a lot of sense. 
uh, it's a software, uh, software as a service company, so it's an enterprise company. Uh, many people, many of their target customers do read TechCrunch. We secured an article which immediately, literally the next day, resulted in a, a tenfold increase in the number of qualified business leads for their, for their service. And again, fairly, fairly reasonable campaign cost. So there's four examples of how PR and communications can help you achieve real business goals. Right, so I've mentioned business goals a lot. You probably understand those. I'm sure you're setting those yourself. Uh, they sound like things like completing our MVP by the 1st of July, uh, raising our Series A funding round, uh, launching a product update, uh, getting $10,000 in revenue. These are all very clear business goals, which I'm sure you're setting for yourselves. But trying to achieve these goals is a little bit more difficult. There's a lot of different strategies, tactics that you can use to achieve business goals, and you're probably aware of some of these. Uh, viral marketing, growth hacking are, are common themes these days. Uh, paid advertising is fairly obvious. Um, most startups can't afford uh, TV advertising, but even social media can be a good marketing tool. Um, testing, even building a better product is a great way to, uh, to, to achieve a business goal. But what many startups lack is having a clear communi communication strategy that can also have a big impact on, on helping you achieve your goals. And uh, today we're going to talk about public relations. Uh, so we talked about business goals. We know what those look like. Here's a, some examples of how communication goals uh, can be formatted. Uh, so on, on, the, on the right here, differentiate our product from the competitors. So this is a communication goal. It's not a business goal. It doesn't help us drive revenue. Uh, it's a communication goal. If we can differentiate our product from our competitors, it helps to convince them that they should be buying our product instead of our competitors. So you can see how this communication goal can help you achieve a business goal. Uh, inform target customers about our new and better way of doing things. Again, it's not a business goal, but it's convincing a target audience to think in a different way and ultimately to, to take an action which, help, which helps us achieve one of our business goals. So it's fairly clear that you cannot set communication goals until you really know what your business goals are. And you can't achieve communication goals without having an understanding of your audience. And that's the next thing we're going to talk about. So, uh, to achieve communication goals in support of your business, you need to understand how your audience thinks, how they perceive your company, if they are even aware of your company in the first place. And these are areas where PR can help. So, we looked at this case study before. We'll come back to it and we'll be working through this uh, as a case study through the rest of this presentation. Again, uh, we got this company onto TechCrunch, which helped them achieve their business goal of increasing leads in the US. So you can see here, the business goal is increasing qualified leads in the US to drive revenue and business in a new market. The communication goal was to secure an article on TechCrunch. Uh, this is a lot cheaper and easier than doing a huge marketing campaign in the US, and the results can can happen fairly quickly. In this case, it didn't happen very quickly. Getting onto TechCrunch is inc incredibly difficult. Um, it took several emails, actually, between myself and one of the TechCrunch writers, introducing the company, providing uh, company updates. Uh, eventually, both the company and the writer were in San Francisco at the same time, and I was able to match them up, and the result was a great article on TechCrunch. So now it's your turn. I, I assume that you have some of the basics. You have an understanding of PR and communications. You have an understanding of how PR and communications can help you achieve real business goals. And if you do have this document, now is the time to bring it out. Uh, we'll be walking through these 
10 simple steps to helping you set your first PR strategy. Uh, this is something you can do in this presentation now. Uh, it's also something you can work through after this presentation. And to be honest, this is a process that you can follow whenever you set a new business goal. Um, even something that you can look into perhaps once a month to, uh, to make sure that you're developing a consistent communication strategy that's in line with your business. Uh, so first step is to identify a business goal. As we said, PR, communication strategy, must support overall business strategy. And so that we, we need to start by setting uh, or by identifying a business goal that we have today. Um, here's a few examples. Um, I would encourage you, if you do have the document, you can literally fill it in now. So you'll see in step one in the document on the second page, you can write your own business goal in the box on the left hand side. Nice and simple. With the example, as I said, we'll be following this Cloud Ike TechCrunch example all the way through. So for them, their business goal was to increase leads for their enterprise cloud service. We'll come to the next step in a second. Right, so once you've got your basic business goal, uh, let's make it smart. Let's make it simple, measurable, measurable achievable, relevant, and time-bound. Uh, so setting a specific end goal when you want to achieve the business goal by is a good way to make sure that you, you work towards specific deadlines as well. So here is the SMART business goal from CloudIke. So secure five qualified leads. We make it measurable for our enterprise cloud service in the USA by the end of Q2 2015. Obviously 2015 was last year. So this is much easier to work towards than this, which is quite vague. Uh, so who has a business goal they can give us? Do you have any business goals yes. in your company? Uh, we just created a new uh, mobile app. So okay. launching this new app will be our business goal. Okay. And my smart business goal will be I want to have 1 million downloads by the end of 2016. Uh, good business goal. Uh, anyone else? I see you have one. <laughs> launch business goal is launch our product, Kasawa. Okay. Kasawa. Great. And smart business goals. Mm. Uh, sell um, more, sell million people, four million people. Okay. okay. So sell one million units. Uh, what is your target market? Is it is, uh, Korea, Asia, start, global? You start driver. Okay. Um, who, who, who are your customers? Are they people only in Korea or Asia or US? First in Korea and mm -hmm. then US. Okay, cool. So maybe, maybe sell half a million, <laughs> half a million units in Korea by the end of Q3, for example, and then maybe another half a million u units in the US before the end of the year. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. That's good. So that's a good smart business goal. Can Very good. Ask a question? Sure. Uh, <coughs> well, we can uh, define define it this uh, this quantity or how do you define the quantity? Yeah. Um, it's a good question. I can't answer that. You need to answer that as a company. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it depends on, for example, production capacity, funding. Um, market need, advertising cost. There's a lot of factors that play into that. So uh, we can help you set the communication strategy, um, but you'll need to answer that question. Okay. We'll move on to step, the next step, step two. Um, identifying key stakeholders. So we all know what stakeholders are. These are the people that influence our business. So key stakeholders, the people who you must reach to achieve your business goal. Um, so who are they? 
uh, for communication. Now we're going to keep this fairly simple. There's a huge range of stakeholders which will have an influence on your business and may also have an influence on every business goal that you set. But for the purpose of this presentation, because it's an introduction, we're going to keep it pretty simple, pretty focused. Um, so who are your primary audience? Um, who, who are your primary audi audience, would you say? Who, who are the people that are going to directly Im impact your so business goal? Would this be a target customer? Yes. Segment? Yes. Is that okay. Good. And what about for your product? Who is your target customer? They, uh, novice drivers. Novice. Oh, novice drivers. Okay. Uh, so that's very niche. Um, and it's a, I guess it's, yeah, it's a niche market. You don't need to get much more focused than that, I think. Uh, and again, for you, first focusing in Korea, and then for the end of the year, focusing in the US. Teenage driver. Teenage, Teenage drivers. US. Okay. Good, good. <coughs> right. Secondary audience. Who are the people who influence your target customers? So if we go back to the CloudIk example, they are trying to sell into uh, basically telecoms companies. It's an enterprise service. So within telecoms companies, uh, what influences them? It could be uh, it could be people in the industry who are very well known. It could be influencers, maybe for many startups, uh, YouTube or social media influencers can have an impact on your target. Um, for you guys, there's a very obvious. Um, secondary audience that you would probably want to connect with. Do you know who that be? Insurance companies. Uh, insurance companies, sure. Um, driving instructors. Parents. Uh, parents, exactly. So driving instructors won't buy your product, I guess, but if every driving instructor in Korea loves your product and tells all of their students to buy it, then that can have a major impact on, your, on you achieving your business goal. And then the, uh, the third group, which is the broadest group, this is the media. So for example, in the CloudIke example, it's TechCrunch. Uh, the media has a major impact on how people perceive brands and products. So influencing the media, if you don't influence the media, it's very difficult to achieve a communication goal. So you need to be able to connect effectively with journalists so that your story gets into the press. Right, so here is step two of the 10 step process. Uh, key stakeholders, primary stakeholders and secondary stakeholders. So these are, uh, you don't need to include the media at this stage because it's relatively obvious. Um, but who are your primary stakeholders, who are your customers, and who are the people who influence your customers? Um, here's a couple of examples. This is from CloudIke. Uh, primary stakeholders, senior business development managers at global telecoms companies, like Orange, uh, who are based in the USA, unlike Orange, and are seeking cloud services partners. Uh, CloudIke produces a, a cloud service uh, solution. Secondary stakeholders, uh, thought leaders who are target listened to. Uh, these, are, these are industry ex experts who might speak at conferences or have podcasts or something like this. Um, <coughs> SaaS writers or bloggers um, who might uh, who cover global innovations in that industry. Influencers on Reddit. A lot of technology uh, Buffins use Reddit a lot. It's a good source of information. Uh, getting influencers on Reddit to talk about your product is a good way to influence your customers. Have you all filled this in with one or two examples? Okay, we'll move on to step three. You've identified your business goals. You've identified your target customers. Now we need to find out a little bit more about your customers. What do they think right now? What do they think about the industry that you're operating in? What do they think about your brand? Um, what do they think about products that you as a company have produced or uh, products or services that your competitors produce? 
Uh, so to influence your target stakeholders, uh, you need to know how they think. And this, is, this will be a slightly more difficult question. You may not have the answer right now. I would say that if you don't know the answer to this question, do what you can after this session to try and find an answer. So we're talking about what your target stakeholders think right now. Uh, what do they think about your industry, the type of service you offer, your competitors. Uh, they might have a pain point. They might want something better. They might want exactly what your service is. Or they might be very happy with the status quo. Um, so for example, I'm actually quite happy with the smartphone I have now. So if I'm going to buy an Apple phone, uh, they're going to need to give me something that I don't have now. And right now, to be honest, I'm quite happy. So they need to find a way to convince me that my current phone is actually not as good as it really is, as I think it is. So here's an example from Cloud Ike. Uh, it's uh, the in the telecoms industry. Um, it's possible that white that they don't know that white label cloud services exist. Uh, and they might think the only way to offer this kind of service to our customers is by developing it ourselves. Okay, so. If you think about CloudIke, CloudIke has produced cloud services for enterprise. So their target stakeholders actually have the wrong impression. They think cloud services don't exist, but actually they do. Do we have any examples of, of what your target customers think right now? Uh, what do your uh, target customers think about exchanging business cards? They are looking for better ways to exchange and manage business cards. Okay getting away from paper business cards. Definitely, I think that's very true. Um, there are other solutions in the market. Yes. Um, what do your target customers think about those solutions? It's hard to uh, set it in, into your uh, contact list, right? Okay, so, so, so basically there are solutions to this problem of just having paper business cards, but there's also issues with all of the solutions. Yes. And hopefully, you've got the best solution in the world for this. Yeah. Uh, do you have a... No? no? Uh, what, what is your product? Our product is uh, when you got a device in the car, mm. you can see that uh, in smartphone app to driving you driving good or bad, something okay. kind of safe driving feedback service. Yeah. Okay, good. So you've just passed your driving test. You're not very confident. Um, you want to improve and you want some feedback on your driving. Um, so I guess these are issues that new drivers all have. It's impossible to hire someone to sit in your car giving you feedback all the time. Uh, so your solution is, is helping people improve their driving continually after they pass their test. Uh, so I guess the perception is the perception is maybe that people have this issue that they're not confident, but they don't know that there is a service available. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. So you, you could write down for step three. Um, new drivers are not confident and they don't think that any services are available to help them become more confident. So we've identified what your target customers think right now. They might be very happy with their current solution. They might have a major pain point that they want someone to solve. Whatever it is, we know what they think now. And now we have to figure out what we want them to think in order for them to help us fulfill our business goal. So if they're very happy with the, the way things are right now, we need to change their mind so that they think our service will make their life better. That's, that's what you want to do. That's, that's why people will buy your, your product. So, like we said right at the beginning, PR and communications is about changing beliefs so that we encourage people to take an action which has a positive impact on our business. So in this section, step four, 
we need to figure out what is the ideal belief that your key stakeholders should think about your company and your product. What do you want your customers to think? Uh, for the example from Cloud Ike, uh, we, we want, us as Cloud Ike, we want uh, our white label cloud service to seem like the perfect solution for enterprise customers uh, and we want them to buy our product. Okay? So whatever they think right now, we want them to think that our service will, is the perfect solution to their problem. Right. So the next stage is uh, identifying issues and opportunities. Uh, issues are things that prevent you from achieving your business goal. Opportunities are things that help you achieve your business goal. And we'll look at this a bit more closely on the next slide. So which issues stand in your way to achieving your business goal? Uh, which things are barriers to you achieving your goal? Um, and which are the opportunities that exist uh, which you can leverage to achieve your business goal? Um, again, there's a couple of examples here. Uh, a couple of examples, the problems for Cloud Ike was they wanted to sell their product in the US, but nobody knew they existed. And for a startup, that's a very common problem. If nobody knows that you exist, you might have the best solution in the world for, some <coughs> for something, but you need to tell people about it. You need to communicate with them. So one of the issues Cloud Ike has, no one knows about their brand. Um, another issue they had, uh, very few people in the industry at the time knew that this type of white label crowd, cloud service even existed. <coughs> which meant that they needed to educate their market. Uh, with the, the business card example, um, people understand the problem, they understand that there are solutions, but they also have some pain points with those solutions. Uh, the opportunities for Cloud Ike. Uh, current services in the market were not really adequate. So similar to the business card solution, uh, there were some solutions to the problem, but they weren't really working very well. Uh, they might have been also too expensive for customers. Uh, the other opportunity they had was that their target customers had already told people, uh, it's already well known within their industry, that they are looking for a way of overcoming this problem. Uh, they're looking for better cloud services to provide to their customers. Uh, so, do we have an issue from our brand new drivers? Nobody knows our solution is first. Okay, that's a very common problem for startups. Yeah. They can't use any solution about car. They can't use any solution about car and another apps, applications. Okay. Uh, they can't use, why Why can't they use them? It's too complicated. Uh, okay, so, so nobody knows about your service and existing services are too difficult to use. Okay, very good, excellent. Uh, step six. So, at this stage, we are getting towards building our communication strategy. Uh, at this stage, we want to turn the issues that we've identified in the previous stage into a communication strategy. Okay, so how can we, how can we lever uh, use these issues to create a communication strategy? So uh, these are the issues that we had from the Cloud Ike example. Uh, no one knows about our brand. This is a very common issue that startups have. And very few people even know that white label cloud services exist. Okay, so these are very typical problems that startups have. How do we turn these into a strategy, uh, a communication strategy? So, no one knows about our brand. 
What can you do to change that? Any examples? Any ideas? What am I doing? Okay, uh, before today, had you ever heard of G3 Partners? No. Nope. <laughs> Have you heard of G3 Partners now? Right. How did you hear about us? Uh, through uh, this orange. Okay, through orange, and because I'm standing in front of you now as well. Okay, so to everybody in this room, except for the guys at orange, G3 Partners was an unknown brand. We could be the best PR company in the world, but if you don't know about us, yeah. So one suggestion we made for Cloud Ike was put yourself forward as an expert who can comment in the media about cloud storage and, and related topics. Now, this isn't the media, but we are standing in front of our target customers speaking to them in person. Um, uh, we probably couldn't get onto TV because we don't have a huge story to tell right now, but this is one way that you can put yourself in front of your target customers. Okay? So I'm working towards achieving our business goal by helping you learn about G3 Partners. Um, what about for you guys? What what tactics could you use? What strategies could you use so that your customers know about you? Well, get yourself known to, I guess, media. Yep. Right. Get yourself known to media. Sure. Uh, how would you do that? <coughs> Will the media come and knock on your office door and say, who are you? What do you do? H how do you get known to the media? <laughs> send an email. <laughs> send an email. Send an email. Go to a journalist networking event. Uh, go to a conference and try and try and network with media, with press. Um, pick up the phone and call someone. Uh, so there's there's some uh, some some communication strategies are incredibly obvious. If you if you aren't in contact with someone that you want to be in contact with, uh, you have to hustle and just get it done. Yeah. Sometimes it means you know, sending an email to someone you don't know or making a phone call. Um, speaking, there, there's a lot of opportunities to speak. This is a good one for G3 Partners. There's a lot of uh, events for startups in Seoul. I'm sure the same is true in Tokyo, Taipei. There's startup conferences, pitch competitions. Uh, these are all good ways that cost you nothing uh, to get in front of your target stakeholders. Okay, uh, so this is the other issue that we're facing. Very few people know that white label cloud services exist. Uh, and here's a PR strategy, a communication strategy to help solve that problem. Uh, meet with influential reporters, and this is you know, the, the media angle here. Uh, meet with influential reporters and bloggers who cover your industry, your beat, um, and explain to them uh, advances in, in the industry that they might be interested in writing about. Um, and with journalists here, you can see that we tell you, you it's not always about pitching your product. Uh, startups all, don't always have an interesting news story to tell reporters. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't do any media outreach. Um, if you put yourself forward as an industry expert to someone who cares about your industry, they're very likely to listen. Uh, they might use you as a reference in another article they're writing. Uh, they might start coming back to you to ask for further information on other articles. So you're not going to get a news item in TechCrunch every month, but if you contact journalists and put yourself forward as an industry expert, it's a way of inserting your company name into the press. I have a question. Sure. Because um, we, we make a smart door lock. Door smart door lock? Yeah, smart okay. Door lock, uh, that can be controlled by a mobile phone. Mm -hmm. It's a DIY app. And we 
have been um, trying to reach reporters mm. in, um, in the U.S. Yeah. They've been writing <coughs> articles about smartbox, you know, product. But uh, we have <coughs> tried to send our, uh, our story, mm. our product, and we did send emails. Yeah. But somehow we did not get any feedback from them. Mm. I don't know why, but... I, we believe that they don't like to write articles that advertise the product. Has uh, that is very of, true. There has some kind of a theme or uh, yeah, some story to write. Okay. Uh, very good point. I'm just going to repeat it just in case it was lost uh, to the other teams. It's a very good point. So uh, we have someone here in Seoul who basically said that they've been reaching out to reporters um, with their story and they haven't got any response. Honestly, um, I reach out to reporters dozens of times every week, hundreds of times every month. Uh, the response rate is probably around 15 to 20 percent. So PR, it can be tough. Um, reaching out to journalists can be tough. They're extremely busy and they have an idea of the story angle they want. If you're sending them information that's not interesting or not relevant, they won't cover it. So, uh, I mean, you're doing the right thing but your story, the information you're giving is probably not compelling enough for them to write about. Uh, that's where, I guess that's where a professional PR agency can come in and help you by telling your story in a way that is interesting for journalists. Um, so try and, I try and identify why, okay, why isn't my story getting traction with journalists? Am I, am, I, am I really writing something that they would be interested in? And ultimately, am I sending them information that would be interesting to the people who read their publication? Um, if you start to ask yourself those questions, you can help to increase the value of the information that you're sending through to journalists. Um, also, uh, you, you're absolutely right that reporters Good reporters will never write an advertorial about your company. Um, it's not their job, and advertorials are not going to be interesting to their target audience. Um, so try, try not to sell your company and your solution. Uh, give, them, give them something that's really going to be interesting. Uh, it could be, as, as Eric said, um, an industry analysis of how Korea is so much more advanced than the US in terms of door locks. And, how the U.S. Uh, homeowners are, you know, losing millions of dollars every year because they don't have the technology that we've been using in Korea for 10 years, for example. Um, so you're talking about your industry. You, if, if they use you as a source, they'll probably put your name and your company name in. So you're inserting your name into the press. But you're right. Don't, don't send an advertorial. Yeah. Hmm. <coughs> And keep trying. <laughs> uh, keep trying. Yes. De definitely don't give up. Okay. Um, you'll, you'll, get, you'll get an article in TechCrunch or something at some point, and you'll be amazed at the result. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So keep trying. Sure. Uh, right, step seven. Uh, so this is actually this is relevant to the discussion we just had about how to send journalists, uh, you know, what to actually write to them. It's really important to define key messages uh, that effectively help to change beliefs. So what are these key messages? You've probably heard about key messages uh, if you've come across PR and communications. Uh, so we're going to have a look into this now. Uh, so effective communication messages can help to change current mindsets. We spoke about this before into the desired mindset uh, that will benefit your startup and help you achieve your business goal. So key messages will help to change beliefs and perceptions and encourage people to take an action that benefits your company. Um, a few pointers about messages. They should be believable. If you say, we have just developed the world's best social network, it's not believable because it's not true. Uh, the, the world's best social network is probably Facebook and will be for the next 10, 20 years, okay? So uh, your messages should be believable. 
uh, they should be clear and concise, not complicated. They, they should almost be like a, co a company tagline, which is very short and powerful and concise. Uh, they also, messaging should be consistent across all channels. So it's very important that your communication messages uh, are aligned with, the, uh, with your business goals, that they're aligned with what your, uh, your CEO is saying at a conference, what you say on your website, what you say in social media. Everything should make a consistent, um, uh, a consistent view of your brand in the public eye. And we have some sample messages on the next slide. Uh, so I think you have, I believe you have, this on step seven. Yeah. So here you can start creating your own messaging. Uh, this comes last, so leave this for now. Uh, work through these. We, we start out by identifying what the company does. So we create smart door locks. Um, we have created a service to help uh, new drivers feel more confident by providing feedback. Um, we've, com uh, we've developed a new application, smartphone application, to help eliminate business cards and help us exchange information easier. Uh, second column, how is our service better or different from other services that are currently available? And what is the market need? What is the market need for your service? If there's no market need, you should maybe think about producing a different service. That, that middle section is where you put the header, and then below that, these are what we call reasons to believe. These are the things that back up what you're saying, the proof points. So if we say CloudIke offers fast and affordable cloud service for enterprise, then we have to say something like, it's proven faster through third-party tests. Uh, prices for enterprise rollout are less than any global competitor over a 12 month period. So things that if someone asks you, prove it, then you can say, oh, well, yeah, I can prove it with A, B, and C. Um, same with the middle column. CloudIC uses client servers around the world which are close to our customers. That's the point about what differentiates them. And then we can talk about they use the client's own servers rather than uh, than the company's servers, the service provider's servers, and we can talk about how that lends to scalability specifically. So you start here with the actual headings, then you work through the reasons to believe that support that. So this is your foundation, the facts that support everything. Have a look at the step seven in your notebook, or if you don't have the workbook, Feel free to use uh, the information on the slide here. So we're looking at this center uh, row here first. Um, uh, what does your What does your company do? We create device and smartphone application for new driver. Okay, created a uh, device and smartphone app for new drivers. Um, you probably want a bit more detail. Okay, so what's the value? What do you bring to your customer? Um, you might want to add for new drivers who are not confident, perhaps. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, uh, for the uh, uh, Dennis, yes. how, how is your company or how is your solution better or different from your customer? from your competitors? So ours doesn't require uh, inputting paper cards. Uh, we are using phone calls and to SMS or MMS to exchange biz cards. Okay, so you've introduced 
uh, innovative and better technology solutions to the problem. Right. Okay, good. And uh, the market need. Uh, the market need for smart locks. Mm. What is the market need? Uh, Which is the, the final column? Mm. Uh, the homeowners who need to carry around keys or worry about losing their keys. <coughs> okay. Sorry. So yeah, so the market need is um, uh, that people need a better solution to entering and securing their house, basically. Yeah, yeah, okay, good. Uh, facts that back this up. This is fairly obvious, um, but you should have this. Uh, so is there any third party proof that what you're saying is true? Uh, has there been a research study by a research uh, company? Has a big consultancy released data that proves that what you're saying? Um, for the smart house lock, um, I'm certain that there's data uh, that says, you know, X number of million dollars is stolen from people's houses in the US every year. That is data that proves that there is a market need for your solution. Um, for the, the driving solution, uh, I'm certain that you can get a lot of references from driving instructors whose students, even after they pass their test, say, ah, you know, I'm still very nervous. Um, I, I want to feel more confident. My wife passed her driving test more than a year ago, and she has never driven a car since because she's too nervous. And she will not drive another car until she has another uh, training program. So she, she would love your service. <laughs> um, and, and validation can also come from your customers. It doesn't need to come from a government agency or a major uh, consultancy. <coughs> OK, moving on. Uh, this, this is a difficult part, very important though. Um, so once you've identified all of this bottom section, <coughs> in this box here in the middle, uh, this is where your key messages, uh, sorry, your, your key message goes. So key message for CloudIke, CloudIke offers the fastest locally hosted cloud storage for enterprise, improving customer satisfaction and creating revenue opportunities for telecoms. So. If their target customers read this and believe it, then there's a good opportunity that they will contact CloudIke to, to find out more. And this is the key message that we used in the TechCrunch article. Step eight. We've got our messages. How are we going to deliver them? If we have the best message in the world, but no one reads it, it will not help us achieve our business goal. Uh, so in the next few slides, uh, we will go over some of the easiest and most effective uh, PR and communication outreach tactics. Uh, there's a lot of them. There's tons of them. Um, but these are some of the ones that we use with our clients most of the time. Uh, and the, the, one of the main points here as well is that these are things that you can do today, okay? So PR does not need to be hugely difficult or complicated or expensive. Uh, these are some of the things that you can actually do today. Okay, next slide. Uh, press outreach. <coughs> it is possible for you to contact uh, TV stations, journalists, radio stations, events. It's possible for you to do that today. It might take a little bit of research to get the contact information, but hand that off to your intern. Tell them to go and find all of the, the writers in the US who cover, um, it wouldn't be smart door locks because that's too specific, but home security, for example, or uh, IoT, uh, this kind of thing. Um, many journalists have their contact information in the publication under the articles that they write. Uh, so you can get in touch with them through that way, or Twitter, LinkedIn. There's many ways to contact people. 
Um, organize a press event. Connect with a few target journalists in your area, whether it's in Seoul, Tokyo, Taipei. Hold a little press event. Um, this is what we did for Let's See Beer. Uh, we completed the project in about five days. So you can do these things quick and easy. Uh, we, had, we had the press event in a bar. We did not have to pay to rent the bar out. We didn't have to pay for anything, really, except for the beer we drank. So a press event does not need to be held in a hotel. You do not need to get a five-star, ten-course dinner. Um, you can do these things fairly quick and fairly easy. Write an article. Uh, someone in your company it is probably interested in writing, blogging. Uh, so write a con contribution article for a target publication. Um, here's an example. Um, this article was written actually by one of our uh, colleagues, uh, Se Jung Yoon, and was published on Tech in Asia. Uh, publications like Tech in Asia take a lot of contribution articles. Um, get in touch with the journalists, build a bit of a relationship with them, find out what they're interested in hearing from you, and send an article through. Uh, they will probably do some editing and then publish it under your name. Again, you don't need to pay a PR agency to do this. You can do it yourself. Uh, contribution articles, they, they should not be an advertorial. Again, they should be along the similar lines that we spoke about before. Interesting to the, the people who read Tech in Asia, but it's a good way of getting your name into the, into the media. Uh, speak at a conference or an accelerator like Orange. Um, there's tons of startup conferences across the world and it's relatively easy for startups to have opportunities to get into these conferences and speak. It could be at a pitch competition, for example. Um, in Seoul we have Be Global. Uh, in Tokyo I know that there is TechCrunch Disrupt. Taipei has Ideas Show. Uh, these are all start, uh, startup events that uh, you can apply to. Um, if you're not doing an actual pitch, approach the organizers and offer your expert knowledge and expertise. Um, I've spoken at tons of events and it has definitely helped me to build my brand, build my network and build the business. Right, we've gone through the strategy. We've told you how to identify business goals, how to match those with communication goals. Um, we've talked about uh, who, to, who to target, your, your key stakeholders. Uh, we've talked about issues and opportunities, and we've moved into building a strategy, and then identifying uh, outreach tactics that can get your messages in front of your target audience. Uh, so what do you do next? You can take away everything you've written down in your worksheet today and actually implement it. Choose one of the issues that you've identified today. Identify a feasible communication strategy. If your communication strategy is get featured in the New York Times, you're going to fail. Okay, so choose something that you can actually do. Um, and then use a simple tactic to address it. It might be reach out to a conference that's happening in the next two months that, uh, that will help you get in front of your key stakeholders. Could be reaching out to a journalist, could be improving, maybe improving your communication messaging, um, maybe getting a coaching session from us on how, how to do that, yep. And moving on to that, uh, so here's a few of the things that we can offer. Um, we, our tagline is Asia's startup PR specialist, but we offer a lot more than just PR. Uh, many people think that we sit in our office all day writing press, rele press releases and sending emails to journalists. Uh, that's definitely a, an important part of the work that we do for clients, helping them get featured in the press, but 
Hopefully you've also understood today that PR and communications is much more than just writing press releases and that there's fairly simple ways that you can use communication to achieve business goals. Uh, here are some of the things that we can offer. Um, marketing strategy, obviously there's a crossover between marketing and PR and if you have someone doing marketing and someone else in the company doing PR, they must be working together. Um, that's really important. Um, we can help with crowdfunding, of course. Uh, press outreach, obviously. Content marketing. Uh, maintaining a company blog. Posting updates on LinkedIn. These are things that you can do very easily. It's also things that we can offer uh, to, to startups. <coughs> uh, press events. Thought leadership. Thought leadership is, is good for building uh, the company brand. It's less uh, a, a strategy for, for selling products. Um, thought leadership can be done by writing contribution articles in target publications, uh, speaking at major events, this kind of thing. Uh, we know a lot of the events in Asia and we can help you to connect with the, the organizers if you're interested in speaking. Uh, websites often overlooked by startups in Asia. Um, your, your website is one of the primary mouthpieces for your company. If your website doesn't clearly explain what you do and why you do it and who you're doing it for, it will fail to connect with your target audience. So uh, we do a lot of work on helping companies improve the content on the website, um, helping them speak more clearly to their target customers and helping them with SEO. <coughs> um, we've helped startups raise investment. Um, again, investment is a process. For many startups, it's a long, difficult process. Uh, we have a ton of experience in working with startups in Asia, helping them improve their pitch deck so that they can pitch confidently in front of overseas investors, but also once they've got that first meeting, once they've got the interest of investors, that's when the real work starts, that's when the due diligence process starts, and making sure that all of the touch points that you have with the public, making sure that those touch points are clear and consistent and convey your company message is important. What I mean by that is your website, okay? so. Uh, the investor will definitely check your website if you're asking them for money. Uh, if your website gives a clear and consistent story of who you are and why you exist, it'll help to build trust. Making sure that uh, your profiles on LinkedIn, Crunchbase, TechList, AngelList are up to, up to date and uh, give relevant information about your company is a way of building trust with investors. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, we, we can really help you with any, anything related to uh, communicating effectively with target stakeholders, and our primary focus is helping companies that are looking to expand beyond their domestic borders, um, primarily in Asia and North America. Yeah. <coughs> okay, uh, so that's all from me. Uh, step 10 in the process is, if all else fails, here's my information, get in touch. Um, I've been working with startups in, in Korea for around four years, uh, and also around Asia for about the last two or three years. Uh, I love helping startups. Um, with startups, you can, you can make a big impact with a moderate amount of effort. And that's very rewarding. So we're always happy to get on the phone or answer questions by email. So feel free to get in touch if you get stuck. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, Danny. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.